Joining us via Skype from San Francisco, please welcome Gretchen Addy, an associate partner and portfolio lead at the design firm IDEO, and June Fisher, a clinical professor of occupational and environmental medicine at the University of California at San Francisco. Leading the conversation, welcome back Alex Wagner. Thank you again for joining us. Um, June and Gretchen, thank you for joining us via Skype. I'm going to get right to the questions. There may be a little bit of a delay. Um, but for people in the audience who are sort of confused about how design can actually help us with the aging process, Gretchen, why don't you tell us where you see the sort of intersection here? Well, I, I think it's interesting when you think about um, designing for sort of any age, not just older uh, adults. I think we, we have a focus always on designing from a very human-centered perspective, but for some reason that starts to trail off as one gets older. And so what we've been trying to focus on is really continuing to engage um, older adults in the design of products, services, and experiences that are a benefit to them um, and potentially a benefit to everyone. I mean, we're, we're all aging every day and uh, thinking about it across the generations and how we can begin to um, impact that process um, and think about it as a continuum, not so much as people are old and now we have to do something different for them. Um, so for me, it is really about designing across the ages and thinking about things uh, as we grow older and beginning to prepare and adjust for those kinds of things in the way that we adjust for any life stage. If you're having a baby, we, we put tremendous energy into designing around that life stage, um, but I think we, we tend as people to get older to kind of forget about that energy and focus and that very human-centered um, kind of response. June, I know that you have a, um, uh, a, a, I think at this point we can call it semi-famous tomato cart that, that was your brainchild. Can you tell us a little bit the story of how that came to be and why you felt you needed a specific kind of cart to go to the farmer's market? Well, I've been hanging around with designers for probably the past 20 years, or maybe a little bit more moving from the medical field, where I was particularly involved in the issues of protecting healthcare workers from exposure to blood. And this is predates uh, AIDS, but then AIDS came. I was at San Francisco General Hospital, which was the uh, epicenter for the world. And we had no protection of healthcare workers. There were no devices that would prevent it. So in a way, I fell into the area of design uh, by screaming, yelling at engineers, do the thing. I got involved with the design course at Stanford. So I come from a background where I have some experience working with designers and uh, more recently I've gotten involved in design for aging from some degree of personal perspective because I am aged and I could see the parallels of looking at design for safe work and design for aging. So in particular about the cart, I got a call one day on a Sunday uh, from a friend who said, I just went to the farmer's market and they have heirloom tomatoes at $2 a pound. We haven't seen them at that price. And I did what unusual for me on Sunday. I jumped up, I got dressed. And then I realized I'm not going to be able to carry that because I, have, I need to use two walking pole, poles for walking. Um, and I, I was upset because I really wanted my heirloom tomatoes. And I had said to myself, I'm going to get three pounds of them. <laughs> and after sitting down, and I finally said to myself, hey, wait, you've been working with designers. There has to be a solution to the problem. So I came up, I need a cart. I need a cart that will act as the walker so I don't have to take my poles and where I can put my three pounds of tomatoes in the cart and anything else I want to buy. 
I had been a consultant for a course at San Francisco State University with the undergraduates who are in design. So I talked about it with the professor and he said, that's a great idea. And he gave the challenge to the students. He gave them two challenges, one to different groups of students, design a cart for me. And the second one was that they were going to enter the Stanford Longevity Contest, which is a contest that's been going for three years now, where it's an international contest for design for aging. And that group was for mobility. And we worked for the whole uh, semester. I went to class all the time with them. I was available for consultation. I was available for um, you, you know, trying out their prototypes. And they also went to look at all the other seniors. So, because you don't want a design for one particular person, you want that design to be universal. And I'm very proud of the fact that one of the teams actually won Stanford Longevity Prize. Uh, the only problem is they, there's only one prototype. Huh. And I don't know if you are able to put that slide up. It's a beautiful car. And I show it to uh, young people or mothers or other people, and they all love it. And it would serve, once I have the city car, I'll be able to use it to walk. I can go downhill. I don't have to take the taxi anymore to the supermarket. And I was planning to buy three of them. Because I'm going to have one, one the second floor and one in my garage so that I can run down the stairs and take it out and just go about town. I think we have a slide and of the tomato cart somewhere. Also, I'm not sure if we can put it up. Steps. Um, and I would assume you can carry more than just tomatoes in that cart, which is a bonus. Gretchen, the problem of being able to go to the farmer's market and buy produce that you can walk home with seems like a really basic design solution. And yet there was nothing on the market. There still isn't anything on the market because we're still in prototype stage. How imperative is it from a design perspective in your mind to have more people of certain ages, older people, advising and in, in sort of integrated into design teams to not only bring up the problems, but to help solve them. No, you're absolutely making a great point there. I mean, June and I this morning were actually talking about we may have to get to the level of a bit of social activism and take a group of older people into an Apple store or into um, a Home Depot and really just point out the fact that um, there needs to be another voice uh, as part of the conversation of designing these products and services and experiences, but also really engaging with the older population to design with them, not for them. Because I think for a long time it's been somewhat, you know, this idea of designing for them and not really understanding um, as June pointed out, you know, working side by side to figure out what are the exact challenges and what are the products that need to be on the shelf to support people um, in that, in a, in a particular life stage. And so, you know, it is a very sort of human-centered engaging with understanding and really going deep um, in the early stages. You know, yes, you want something to be beautifully designed. We certainly don't want to stop doing that. But I think the idea of really understanding up front, um, I mean, at IDEO, we went so far as to engage um, June and Barbara Beskin and other um, folks who have a comfort with designers and understand their process to help engage them um, in our process of designing and you know, working side by side and very closely with them uh, just to experience it firsthand and to be able to ask the questions and try and prototype things and then take it out and try it with others. Because um, as June said, it needs to work for a broader spectrum of people. Um, but I think the marketplace you know, has been pretty slow to respond to the fact that we have an aging population. It's, it's a hard conversation for us as designers with our clients 
to really push them, you know, to understand that there is a market there, that there is a platform that they could begin to offer products and services uh, and, you know, think differently about this. I, I think if you look at countries like Japan and other parts of Asia where um, it's embraced and understood that there is an aging population and that there needs to be more design focus and understanding of how to make that continuum of growing older easier and um, supported and beautifully designed. Um, and we need to get that fire sort of in ourselves here in the U.S. as well. Uh, June? Uh, if uh, I could what, answer to that, um, one of my most recent experiences exactly where you're, uh, the question you were asking, and again, if I can go back to my prior work with healthcare workers, we did a course in design for nurses. As I had the good fortune of having Stanford product design students as interns, and they worked closely with the nurses. But they came to me one day and said, you know, we think we know what they're doing. They were, you know, wetted at the hip. Um, they just went through days and days of Thing, and that, but they don't know what we do. And I said, great idea. Let's give a course in design for nurses. So we gave several times a course in design for nurses. And out of that room, standards, and as I mentioned before, we didn't have safety devices. Now we have lots of them. But we were able to come out with standards, what we needed. We had to use our imagination. And that's part of design is using your imagination. And our big shock was to find out that these became the standards for the uh, for de facto standards for the industry. That was something we didn't expect. And that's very powerful. So that talking about aging, uh, I've been going around saying, let's do a course for uh, aging people in design so they can better participate. Well, one of my colleagues took it one step further, and he decided that we would have a course that included not just uh, seniors, or I like to call them sages, but it would also <laughs> include the undergraduates at Berkeley. So we did this course with navigating the human path, and it was an incredible experience. We just finished it last semester. I hope we'll do it again. It's gotten a lot of visibility internationally in other groups uh, where uh, we had 15 elders or sages and 16 undergraduates working together in teams uh, both uh, talking about design thinking but also going into projects. The uh, sages are fired up. They want more. <laughs> They're ready to go to start. Uh, They're even planning to go to companies and say, engage us so that you can design properly uh, with us, not for us. Well, we love the idea of fired up sages. Um, before we go, Gretchen, I just, I just suggest to people who are listening to this conversation that it's a two-way street when you have um, older advisors, older sages in the design lab. I would assume it also benefits the younger designers as well to have that perspective. Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I think having both June and Barbara and access to them um, on a regular basis uh, is truly inspiring. And, you know, it's, it is one thing when you, many people talk about, say, you know, their grandparents or their own parents and sort of going through the aging and, and there's story and emotion attached to it, but I think when you're working side by side with them um, in the design context, you begin to really understand sort of um, beyond the emotional, you know, what are the actual challenges, what are the functional things, what are the um, sort of values and, and ways of thinking and approaching design uh, that really help shape the way they think about their work going forward um, in many ways, um, not just working on projects um, for products or services for older adults, but actually just thinking about it um, in their own lives as well as um, in, in how they 
uh, design um, sort of anything that crosses their path. I think uh, mixing the generations, I think, has been a really, you know, sort of big opportunity for us to really leverage, you know, the fact that in the workplace now you can have three or four generations. Yeah. And that synergy of those working together um, is sort of the perfect storm, I think. <laughs> well, we love that one of our sagest panelists, guests today, is coming to us through some of the newest technology. I thank you both, Gretchen and June, for your time and, and for your innovations. I know my mom wants one of those tomato carts. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you both.